In news from Jamaica, the government is strengthening its resolve against crime and violence. Legislators have given their support to a bill touted as a major weapon in the fight against violence. On Tuesday, the lower house passed the DNA bill, which was piloted by National Security Minister Peter Bunting. He explained that the bill authorizes law enforcers to collect DNA samples from persons being investigated as well as convicted criminals. Mr. Bunting believes the new law will yield great success in the fight against crime. He says police officers will be better equipped to solve crimes. Under the DNA bill, provisions have been made for the collection and retention of DNA samples. A DNA registry will also be established. Mr. Bunting says he is aware of the concerns expressed about compulsory taking of body samples. However, he cautions that the highest standards will be followed. The court noted that the use of fingerprint databases has been generally accepted and went on to say as follows, quote, the only difference between DNA analysis and the accepted use of fingerprint databases is the unparalleled accuracy DNA provides, end quote. The court went on to opine as follows. The DNA collected from arrestees is an irrefutable identification of the person from who it was taken. A DNA profile is useful to the police because it gives them a form of identification to search records already in their valid possession. In this respect, the use of DNA for identification is no different than matching an arrestee's face to a wanted poster of a previously identified suspect, or matching tattoos to known gang symbols to reveal a criminal affiliation, or matching the arrestee's fingerprints to those recovered from a crime scene. Meanwhile, during the debate on the DNA legislation, the opposition raised some concerns. Opposition spokesman on security Derek Smith questioned whether the constitutional rights of citizens would be breached when taking DNA samples from persons only suspected of a crime. It has also been suggested that the bill will empower the police to forcibly hold a suspect and remove hair from his or her body or saliva from the mouth for storage under the pretext of reasonable force. Mr. Speaker, these are issues which need to be addressed and we should not pass this bill without implicit assurance that the constitutional rights of our citizens will be protected at all levels. Mr. Speaker, over the past three years, we have developed a very untidy way of conducting public business in the House. This includes passing bills with possible or obvious flaws and suggesting that the issue can be fixed at the time of the first review of the Act. And Mr. Smith also raised the doubts about the integrity of the current forensic lab to store DNA samples. These include the question of protection of the samples while they are being kept as well as their disposal. I must also remind the Minister that the previous JLP Cabinet had given approval for the retention of an independent oversight tribunal to review the performance of the Forensic Science Lab or the Forensic Institute, both in terms of biological testing and matching the quality and its quantity quality control. Mr. Speaker, despite assurances and assistance from the U.S. government over recent years, of forensic lab is still not up to required standard. The minister should recall the harsh criticism of the Auditor General in her 2011-2013 report in which she expressed her disappointment with the capability and performance of that lab. In the end, the bill was approved with bipartisan support. Security Minister Peter Bunting also assured that proper protocols were in place to protect every citizen's rights. He added that samples will be kept to the highest standards.